today is August um, oh shoot it's my setting August 10th Xavier's birthday is tomorrow my daughter's birthday is in two weeks happy birthday to Xavier and my daughter preemptively hold on you guys I'm connected to my backup device I need to connect to my iPhone there's Wi-Fi here it's free that's great Disconnect. So super dramatic morning, you guys. Hold on, let me. Fantastic. So we are back. How are you guys doing today? Hi, you guys. Good morning. Um, we're at the Lincoln Park Conservatory doing some killers. I don't know what's going on in Chicago the last few days. It's been packed with people. Like, everywhere we go, there are people. And, like, usually spots where there's not that many people. It's so weird. Um, I am going to do some killers this morning. Uh, I've, been, I've been sharing with you guys that I, during my pregnancy, gained a lot of weight. Probably, like, 60 pounds, maybe 70 um, nothing new. I have four children. One of them is 18. The other one is, well, will be 18. The other one is 16 and the third is 10, um, about to be 11 and the baby will be, well, he just turned six months old. So, um, before I had Weston, I was weighing in at like 123, 133 pounds, um, as my lowest and my highest was like 140 or 150 on average. So I ranged between 125 and 150. Um, and that was depending on a lot. Was I lifting heavy weights in the gym? How was I eating? How was I sleeping? But for about a good four or five years, that was where I was from about 18 months after my uh, younger daughter, Alexis was born all the way until I got pregnant with Weston. I was always between 125 and 140. Um, right now I put myself approximately 165 or 170. Um, and I am very eager to get back into my pre-pregnancy shape and size and clothing size. I refuse to buy like jeans or clothes or even try on for any size over, uh, like a six. I've tried on eights, um, that were given to me for free through donation um, and they fit right now. So I really want to get back to my happy size where I feel healthy and light and like I can move freely. And that is definitely going to be a size four to six, um, four in dress, six in pants, usually long. That's my, that's my target. That's my happy, uh, healthy weight. And I'm five foot nine for perspective. I do have a background in healthcare as well as fitness. Um, and I have done private personal training, um, and I've also worked for Export and LA Fitness. Um, so besides that, I've done ISSA and CCPT and NASM uh, for training for fitness, and I've completed all of those courses and tested out of ISSA as well as NCCPT, never NASM. Um, so I have a lot of knowledge, and I know what works. For me, as a weightlifter who's not currently in the gym, um, I do a lot of really high uh, amounts of cardio. So I'm doing um, approximately 60 miles of bicycling or walking or, um, you know, some other sort of, you know, intensive cardio or low impact cardio, depending on the day, just something that gets my heart rate into a zone of two. That's the ideal heart rate for maximum fat burning while not burning away your muscle is heart rate zone two. So the best way to go about this, and I've done this before, I was my own personal trainer for a good year. Um, I had a private personal trainer for about six weeks after my daughter was born. And then I hired a prep coach for MPC who helped me with my nutrition and my dieting. And then I kind of took it from there. 
and I did fantastic on my own. Um, and that's when I decided to be a personal trainer. So besides my healthcare background, I also have fitness and personal training. Um, and so I'm doing this myself and I'm excited to share my journey. Like I said, I'm, I'm still breastfeeding and I'm six months postpartum. So I'm not putting myself on the extreme diet regimen that I put myself on when I was trying to prep or entering a prep season for the NPC. Um, I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm eating what I can. I'm in a situation of homelessness right now where we're living in a shelter um, and praying to God that we find some sort of employment sooner than later. Um, it's terrible. I would not wish this situation on anyone. I think that no one should be permitted um, or forced to live in this sort of setting. It's incredibly oppressive, very abusive, and incredibly dramatic. Um, the people there seem to spend their time doing a lot of uh, gossiping about each other and worrying and living in stress. Um, it's just not a good environment for anyone. And I believe that the model should be when a person is homeless, the first thing they should do is go to the ER because housing is health care. From the ER, they should be assessed for one of numerous things. Do they have a drug problem that led to their homelessness? Do they have a mental health problem that led to their homelessness? Do they have a domestic abuse problem that led to their homelessness? Do they have a poverty problem that led to their homelessness or none of the above? You put people into one of those five categories and then once you put people into those categories, you can um, better assess their individual needs and assess the situation and then assign them a living situation that will help, that will help them with whatever is keeping them homeless. Um, so to be honest with you guys, the fact that I'm no genius and I've been able to figure this out and kind of solve this, um, it makes me feel as though people kind of want, um, you know, to, to keep homelessness as an issue um, when it doesn't need to be. We have solutions. We have tw 2024 has things like Airbnb, has things like Hotel Tonight, has things like Priceline. And we, they can go through and Rolodex every flight that exists, every apartment that exists for rent, every hotel that exists for rent, every Airbnb that exists for rent, and put them in a CRM-based system where people can match themselves to a living situation. Now, if we take out the, the point of concern being enough money, we should be able to do the same thing with beds for the homeless. We should be able to have an Airbnb system that tells you where there is a bed, you know, when it's available, for whom, what area, you know, and what specialty, meaning is this for someone who's detoxing from drugs or alcohol? Is this for someone who's just poor, et cetera, and so forth? And the fact that we don't do that literally leads me to believe that there is some other reason, probably and possibly nefarious, to keep people in this current state of oppression where they have to be homeless. Um, it's bad for everyone. It is not good. It's a bad. It is not positive. There's nothing about it. When we go in there, it's a lot of, as I said, if you're an empath and you can pick up on energy and vibes and you can feel what's going on, it's really, really difficult to be in that situation and keep your vibe elevated because it starts to weigh on you, the collective vibe. Like I can walk in there and be like, oh my God, this is such bullshit. They canceled the visit with my son. My daughter hasn't picked up the phone. I'm so upset. Now, when you have that 35 times in one small space, imagine the energy levels. You know, we all have like one thing that's upsetting us and we don't have one thing. We have like 30 things, 50 things, 100 things. So when we all have that one thing and then we say that one thing and then we try to get our, our vibration back up after like sharing or leaning on each other or even being quiet but just carrying that energy, you could feel that frequency. All of that stress, that, that blocks us. It blocks energy from passing through us and it's very difficult you know, to manage in a small condensed space. We turn to God, we tell God about our problems, we pray for assistance and we do all of these things, but at the end of the day, energy is real. It's a part of physics. Um, you can hear and feel sound. That's true. You can hear and feel sound. Have you guys ever been standing next to like a symbol that crashes? You can feel the vibration of that energy. So that's the same way that energy works. And in order for us to exist in spaces and cohabitate in spaces where we are able to be happy and healthy, we need to isolate from each other. Um, and what I mean mostly by that is we need to be able to walk away from that bad energy that our neighbor might have when we need a break from it. 
Um, and these, these shelter situations don't offer that. Um, Shield of Hope offers that, the Tremont offered that, and that's why I've said so many times, the model for shelter and assistance needs to be one room with a bathroom for every couple, household, or individual. Um, and that's it. You don't teach people how to live on their own in their own apartment or house by throwing them in a room of 35 people. That's closer to institutionalization and prison or hospital setting. Even in a hospital setting, you have your own bed. In a prison setting, you're in a dorm with multiple other people. So what are we really preparing these people for? And it just seems incredibly oppressive, incredibly, incredibly abusive and wrong for me, a mother with four children, um, as, fe as well as for the rest of the people who are in there. Um, so I'm going to do some killers right now. Um, and like I said before, this is going to be, um, a good total body workout, um, just to get my heart rate beating in the morning. And then Xavier and I are going to do probably another three mile walk, um, just to start the day. So a killer is when you, hold on, let me, I'm going to, I'm going to put this here so you guys can see better. A jump, a jump where you spread your legs, a jump where you jump straight up and, I'm sorry, where you spread your legs and open your arms, a jumping jack, and then back down, a jump where you spread your legs and put your arms up, and then a jump where you just spread your legs, and then a jump straight up. And then open your tiptoes. They open up at 10. Oh, at 10? Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Um, the door so, should be open, right? They, yeah, I thought they opened at 9, but that's 10. Um, so I'm going to do a set of those. And when I say I'm doing 6, it means up to 6 and then back down from 6. If I'm doing 10, it's up to 10 and then back down from 10. Usually I like to do three sets, three sets, and I'll start at like three consecutive numbers, five, six, and seven. So right now, I'm just gonna start at five. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. 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 One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, It, but he hasn't been able to hook it back up to his sim. Okay. So that was five. And we're at the Lincoln Park Conservatory. If you guys have ever been here, it's a beautiful place right outside the Lincoln Park Zoo. Uh, I'm trying to make the best of it. Obviously, I have four children, and my children have lived with me their entire lives prior to 2020 when I had, like, all hell break loose um, in my life personally. And I have been really suffering um, with regards to housing ever since. Um, I've been through a whole lot. I don't like to really speak about the victimizations anymore. If you guys can look at my account and watch my videos, I've spoken about them candidly in a number of occasions. Um, just to give a brief overview, I've been sexually assaulted while homeless, beaten up robbed, kicked in the face while pregnant, 
Um, and these are issues and, and ongoing statements from times when I was being completely unpro- when I was completely unprovoked, um, when I was not provoking anyone. So I was the like, what's the word? Uh, I was laying on a yoga mat asleep for two of the attacks. Um, a third attack, I was asleep on the train. So three times that I've been physically assaulted, it's been while I was asleep. So you know that that um, means that I was not provoking any women in any shape or form. So it's very uh, sad that we live in this type of society where a woman, a single mother of four children, meaning single as I'm just one person, um, could be beaten, robbed, raped, abused, call law enforcement for assistance, have them not do anything, go to the, you know, other authorities, have them not do anything. Um, and Xavier said that his brother was the district attorney um, and that he was going to help me and that they were taking me to a safe house. We spent about a month there and then they told Xavier and I both that we needed to go. So no assistance has been provided uh, up until today, which makes me believe that there's a larger issue. And to fill my time, I spend my time checking on my children, working out, um, doing activities that I would do with my children. So I'm going to the zoo, taking walks, going to the beach, applying for jobs, building my business with my brand. Um, I have not had much luck, and we're literally at five years. This happened, most of you know, um, just a little bit after uh, I appeared in a very small um, reality show. Very, very small episode. I mistake. I wish I never did it. And because of the publicity that I had generated over the years in my career as an online performer, um, which I have not done since 2019, um, those followers followed over to the reality show, and those followers followed me here. which means that my struggle was being shared with 100,000 people and it didn't really do me much good. As a matter of fact, a lot of people who do not have any right um, to discuss my life or, you know, unless they're going to you know, be of assistance, have intruded, have intentionally done uh, incredibly provoking things in an effort to get some sort of a rise. Now, there's definitely a time when you can not be provoked even when they're trying to provoke you, but then there's a time when your physical safety comes into play or your mental health comes into play and you, any United States citizen or person walking around in this country, has the right to peace, uh, has the right to, you know, walk around without provocation and antagonization and uh, physical harm, sexual harm, etc. and so forth. And if we're living in a society where we do not deem those things to be true, that is not a society that I think any of us would want to exist in. Um, as I, I know for a fact, that's not a society that any of us would want to exist in. We want to exist in a society where we can go to sleep at night and wake up knowing that our belongings are where we left them, in our nightstand or in our bag. We want a society where we can go to sleep at night in a nightgown and not be afraid that we're going to wake up with a big, huge man mounting us from behind. We want to live in a society where we can take our children out and feel safe. Where we can bring our kids to the zoo or to the mall and we can feel safe. We want to live in a society where a stranger can't come knock on our door and say, an anonymous person made a call to us, so we're going to steal your family from you, right? I'm fairly certain that we all want to live in that kind of society. So we continue to pray and rely on God, but it has to be more than God. God will move us, and God is moving us. So we're going to go to a different location here, and I'm going to do that with one round of five pillars. So I like to do five, six, seven, and then, you know, sometimes seven, eight, nine. I typically go up to ten, as I said. Fast and cardio, meaning you don't have breakfast and then you get your heart rate up, um, is phenomenal for burning fat, gaining muscle, um, and doing so in a way that allows you to keep your gains, so to speak, um, which is difficult because there is no such thing as targeted weight loss, which we all know. Um, 
I'm going to move from this spot just because it seems like a very high traffic area. Everywhere I go, you guys, seems like a high traffic area. When I get there, there's no traffic, but after I get there, it becomes high traffic. But I'm going to move, and then I'll jump back on in a little bit. I just wanted to say what's up and share with you guys what I've been learning. Um, if there's any software development going on with regards to this situation, it's like far overdue. I really pray that you guys can come up with something quickly. Um, no one should have to exist in spaces like this. These are highly oppressive and abusive spaces, uh, you know, that should not be in existence. So you guys have a great day.